Surf 102.5 Podcast. Over the last three years or so, one of the most popular local Facebook pages has really taken off. Hohen, What's Going On? Run by Patrick Jacob. I asked Patrick why he started his Facebook page. The thing is, like, I, I got frustrated with seeing stuff that was yesterday. Mm. And um, what triggered it for me, and you know him, this is Andrew Bunag. I saw pictures yes. of him. That was Andrew's the, another photographer yeah, who yeah. lives locally. Yeah, here. yeah. Right. And, and I saw pictures of him, and they, they were amazing. Mm. And it was a boat race with these paddles mm. on these, these long, long uh, boats race boats and and uh, i asked him like where wh when did you take this he's like oh this was sunday on the lake in kautau it's like why didn't i know about this yeah, and yeah. that's where where it started and i was telling the same story and then somebody said like oh why don't you start your own facebook group then so that's where well, what's, in, what's, what's going, going on, on and so many from. people refer to that now mm -hmm. to find out what's happening around here yeah which is terrific you know you, you there is one there is one rule Yes. Um, I don't accept posts. The reason why is that a post sinks down um, the a timeline faster than you can think. Mm. When you create it as an event, and, and that's really a key point, when you create it as an event, what happens is that y the moment you create an event, it locks into a calendar. And everywhere all over the world, who goes to Facebook and he, they want to see what's going on wherever in the world. If you log into Facebook right now, you go to events and Facebook tell, asks you where, what do you want to know? Where Barcelona, Brussels, New York, and you can say, I want to, I want to see the art galleries. I want to know where I can have fine dining right. promoted as an event. It's there within seconds. So if you dial in Hua Hin, it should come up. Well, if you, if, you, if you go to Hua Hin, what's going on, in the sidebar or just yeah. underneath, you have events. You have to scroll a little bit, but then you have events. When you click on it, all the events appear. So all the events that I share, I, basically I don't need to share them, but most of the people don't know where to look for events. Exactly. And that's why I, I, I post them every day. So you're posting the events every day. And repeat what you said about the sidebar. There's three uh, varieties for the moment. You have a desktop, uh, you have a um, uh, tablet, and you have a phone. phone. Mm. If you take the phone right under the banner. So you've got the main picture, the main picture. of your the, yeah. Facebook page. There you have uh, your announcements, you have your watch parties, you yes. have your photos, you have your events, you have your files, you have your um, uh, albums, albums, topics, mm. recommendations. Now, the moment you click on events, it opens up and you will see upcoming events, past events, and it goes on and on and on and on and on. Everything is listed there. Everything is listed. And not a lot of people know this, actually. They True. just look at the front yes. page of your Facebook page. Yeah. So have a look at those titles and then you can check yes. it out much more easily. There's Great. also, next to events, you have files. Yeah. When you click on those, you end up with all fi a lot of files that I created on, on festivals, on uh, Buddha days, uh, on handmade monk mm. alms. Uh, and these are all like articles, Katin ceremony, uh, quiz nights, uh, Pitakon festival, Samrayot National Park. So, so do you write all these up? Do you? Is this what um, you're doing? I'm, I'm taking pictures and then I'm, I'm, I Google. <laughs> But there's a huge list of stuff under oh, files, yes. which a lot of people won't have no. seen. That's well worth knowing. What's going on with the Facebook page for next year? How are you going to develop it further? I just think it's, it's going to grow. I don't know where it's going. You never know. What I don't allow is people talking to, too much to each other. Yeah. There are sometimes um, topics that are controversial. And when you have ongoing conversations on other Facebook pages that you, where you go like, guys, what is this all about? So Hua Hin, what's going on is about Hua Hin. It is, and it's not course. what you think about the restaurant or it's not what you think about this venue or this and that. For me, it's like when somebody has problems with a restaurant owner 
or a hotel or whatever or a shop where they've been maltreated or they didn't get the service they want you talk to the owner mm. you don't talk to Facebook that's the way I see it <laughs> my thanks to Patrick Jacob and his Facebook page Hoi Hin what's going on if you regularly visit Facebook, chances are you will have seen plenty of photos of Hua Hin taken by photographer Patrick Jacob. We met up for a coffee and a bit of a chat and I asked Patrick about his new calendar for this year. Since 2020 is such a, a horrible year, yeah. I, I, I thought I, I had to do something special. So um, my first thought was like, I want to do something for charity. I thought it was a little bit selfish for taking only my pictures. So I, I talked to a, photo, uh, a couple of photographic friends of mine and, yeah. and asked them if they were willing to spend a, a couple of pictures. And they said, yeah, of course we do, but you do the organization. We ended up with three photographers giving four pictures. Then one guy says like, oh, I have another friend. Can he chip in? And then we have four photographers and then we had six photographers and we ended up with 12 different photographers. For me, it was uh, very important that they they have a connection with Thailand. They're either married, they live here, um, there are a couple of, the, of them that live abroad, but they all have a connection with Thailand. And I, I was asking them, like, give me one of your best pictures or a couple of your best pictures, mm. how you see Thailand, what Thailand means for you. And that's uh, all bundled up in this so calendar. So, yeah. Yes. Now, you've decided on a charity, yes. which is a local charity here. For me, it was like Jungle Aid because it's it is such a great organization they do so much good work so i contacted jungle aid and i asked them like could we do this for you i had an interview with emma and, and we talked a little bit about jungle aid and then she said and then she invited me she said like why don't you come with us on saturday we're going okay. to ban to bankrut so well, where is bankrut bankrut is about 300 kilometers away from here it's it's uh, south? south yes okay Bang Sapan, Bang Krut, that, okay, that area. Well, and, okay. and, and Jungle Aid has a project where they rent a house over there and there's like in between 15 and 25 children living in that house uh, while the parents are, are working in the jungle because they're all scattered. And um, the children living in a house with a couple uh, of uh, elderly people and young mothers. So a lot of these kids, they're not Thai citizens. No, they? They, 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 don't, they don't have a nationality. They don't have antif uh, identification papers. They're all... Stateless, right? Yeah, stateless, yeah. Yeah, mm. correct. So but now they have some education? Uh, no, uh, no, the thing is that when they're with their parents and the parents, they don't speak Thai. The Thai government allows now for those kids to go to school so they can learn Thai. And, and that's why Jungle 8 rented that house. I see. In, in, in. Okay. So we got there and, and, and there was a, a doctor who came with us along, along with us for the first time. His name is Dr. Mo. And he starts to talk to her in her own language. Now this well, what is the language? Is it a village language or Myanmar language? Yes, yeah, a Myanmar language. Uh, yeah. is it, you have all these dialects and stuff mm. like that. So it's, it, and, and he's talking t directly to her in that language. And they looked at him like, what's the deal here and and dr mo is a child raised in a refugee camp orphaned picked up by somebody um taken to australia put him through school he started school when he was 13 went through the school went to university and became a doctor for him to yeah. be in that village you could see the hope in the in the in the people's faces where you go like huh? how is this possible for them to watch what they could become especially the kids that was amazing so Correct. and then and then then i decided like to really put my shoulders under this project okay. because uh, i i really want to reach the point with this calendar where you can say like okay we can have one kid go to school for a whole year which is about 70,000 baht. Mm. So I'm hoping to raise this kind of money That's with this calendar. Yes. Through the sale of the calendar. Through the sale of the calendar, Excellent. yes. Where do we go from here? You want to give away a couple of calendars? I want, I want to give a, a, an, an A5 and an A4. Okay. So that's a large one and a small one yeah, to the, you and the, me. The, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the, the, eight, the, eight, uh, the A5 is a desktop 
and the A4 is a hanging calendar. Right, and you'd like to give two away. I like to give two away. Now... Do you know how you want to do that? Yes, I have a question. This is scary. Um, what I want is the total amount of years of all the photo photographers together. All right. And this so is that's 11, the ages. 11, yeah, the, right. that's the ages. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so there you go, we've got two calendars and we need two winners. All you have to do is guess the combined ages of all 11 photographers. Guess how old the photographers are, add up all their ages, and put your answer down on our Facebook page at Surf102.5. Surf102.5 Podcasts.